Hello everyone and welcome to my video. In this video, I'm gonna be breaking down how to make a budget-friendly version of a photo booth setup for your upcoming event or wedding. It was a few months ago that I created a DIY wedding tips and tricks video where I shared a little bit of information on how I DIY'd a photo booth for my own wedding. Well, since my wedding, I've actually used this photo booth setup for a couple of other events that I've been a part of, and I decided to create its own separate video to show you guys an in-depth tutorial of how to create this photo booth setup for any event that you may have coming up. First, I'll be breaking down how to make the photo booth backdrop, then I'll be showing you guys some easy ways to find props for your photo booth, and lastly, I'll be sharing with you what I feel is the easiest setup for your friends, family, or clients to be able to take pictures at a self-service photo booth. So, if you're interested in learning how to make this DIY photo booth setup, then just keep on watching. Let's start with the backdrop. You will first need to go pick out PVC piping to create the framework for a backdrop to go on. Here at Home Depot, I was able to find one inch PVC piping that worked great. You will also need to purchase connectors for the PVC pipes. I purchased two right angle connectors, which are shown here, and then four T-shaped connectors like these. You may wanna pick up a PVC pipe cutter while you're there as well. Then head over to the fabric store. When shopping for fabric, find something that has a little bit of stretch to it that doesn't wrinkle too easily. This will make the fabric fall really naturally when it's hung. In addition, choose a pattern that's neutral enough to not clash with any of the outfits of folks that are posing in front of it. Black can sometimes blend in with black clothing, as well as white can wash lighter clothing out. I recommend colors like golds and silvers if you want to stay neutral. Otherwise, choose a fabric that will complement the theme of the event you're putting on. In the circumstances of buying fabric at a store like Joann's, you'll want to buy twice the length of the height of your photo booth frame. The reason being is you will need to cut this fabric in half so that you have two panels to go across the whole PVC pipe frame. I'll explain this a little bit later, but make sure to also have additional inches so that the fabric has enough space to barely grace the floor when it's hung, as well as to accommodate for when a hem is sewn onto it. My fabric measurements will be listed in the description box for this project. Once you have your materials purchased, the first thing to work on will be the PVC pipe frame. PVC is easy to cut and can be done with a traditional handsaw or a PVC pipe cutter like the one I'm using here. You will want to cut two seven foot pieces for the height and then two six foot pieces for the length. The legs of the frame are made up of four one and a half foot pieces. And then to assemble the frame, you'll actually also want to cut off one foot from each of the seven foot pieces to attach the legs. This will all make sense once the frame is being assembled. Once you have all the piping cut, it's time to assemble the frame indoors once you're ready to set up the photo booth. For the purposes of this video, I'll be assembling it in my living room. What's nice about working with PVC piping is that you can easily collapse down the pieces of the frame for easy transportation and easy setup. I'll pop a graphic on the screen for the exact measurements of my frame as well for those who need it. Once the frame is assembled, you'll want to measure the fabric to the desired length, also making note of how big of a hem that will need to be sewn onto the fabric. Using a scrap piece of PVC pipe, you should be able to easily measure and pin the fabric to sides. Take the fabric over to a sewing machine and make sure you have the appropriate setup to sew a slightly elastic fabric. I have a stretch needle assembled onto my machine and a walking foot to help guide the fabric. Sew all the way down using a zigzag stitch. I find this type of stitch holds well. Once you have your hem complete for both panels, you should be able to easily slide the fabric onto your PVC pipe frame. Did I mention you may need a partner to help setting this up? <laughs> Make sure to then adjust the fabric so that it's evenly bunched across the frame and there isn't a gap in the middle or anything. Now that you have your backdrop, what about props? Well, there are a couple of places you can check for budget purposes. Thrift stores and dollar stores are a great first start. You can find different kinds of hats, search through funky looking sunglasses, or pick out headbands for very affordable prices. Or you can make your own. Buy a blank picture frame and write in your favorite saying inside of it. People love an easy prop that they can just hold up for a picture. Another thing that's really easy to make are little paper thought bubbles. Just cut out pieces of poster board and hot glue a dowel onto the back. Write a phrase and you're good to go. Props can go in any kind of storage bin to be easily transported to any venue. And these are just a few of the props that I've collected from home or from thrifting adventures. 
Put together whatever you think best fits the theme of your event. So now, how do you go about taking photos? Well, the setup I'm about to show you, I have found to be excellent for any event that you may have in mind. The items that are required to complete this setup include a ring light tripod, an iPad, and an iPad mount. I'll be linking the ring light and the iPad mount that I use in this video down below. The setup allows people to easily use a photo booth without the need for someone to manage it. When it comes to initially setting up the tripod, placement is key. First, determine the distance away you want the tripod to be. Make sure that the tripod isn't too far back for fear of capturing some of the stuff that's behind the backdrop created. In addition, make sure it's not too close for fear of people getting caught up, tripping, or running into the backdrop you created. Lighting is also important as well. Once you have your tripod set up, make sure it is sturdy and that any extension cords are taped down and laid in a way that people won't trip over them when they're walking up to take a photo. Make note that the iPad will be in selfie mode during the photo booth session. Guests will want to make sure that they're looking at the iPad camera lens rather than the display screen for the best photo turnout. Now for the automated photo booth camera feature, I'm going to be recommending an app for this function. Luma Booth is a photo booth app that I have used in the past for this kind of thing and I love the customizability of it. And no, this is not sponsored, so they're getting free promotion here, honestly. <laughs> First thing the app has you do when you first log in is create an event name. And you can create more than one event on your account, which is super awesome because it saves all of your template settings. It'll then walk you through a series of prompts to customize exactly how you want the photo booth experience to go. Here, I'm customizing a welcome screen, which will be the first thing that guests see when they walk up to the photo booth. You can change the text, you can customize a background color, or you can even upload an image to serve as a background for your event. From there, you can select what type of image you want to be captured. LumaBooth gives you several options, but for today's purpose, I'm just going to select the option for a photo to be taken. You can even customize the settings of how you want the camera to capture photos. I'm unchecking the GIF option for a reason here, which I'll explain later, but you can see there are plenty of customization steps whether you enable videos, boomerangs, or GIFs to be an option. As far as the photo layout goes, there are presets to determine how you want the final image to come out. You can also customize the size and shape of the pictures as well. One of the options that I like to use is to insert a custom graphic onto the photo layout slide to help with things like branding for whatever event that you might be hosting. This will be what the final photo image looks like at the end of each photo session. There are some other fun features which I don't typically utilize as your average everyday consumer, but things like a green screen, basic photo edits, or having a virtual attendant could be useful to some. There also is an option to sync a printer up to this app. However, I prefer keeping things digital for the most part and therefore don't get too much use out of this feature. I prefer the sharing function of this app. Notice you can share images via email, SMS, or even on social media. You can customize a message that you want your guests to receive when the text goes through too. Just keep in mind that the outgoing messages will be kept in a queue until the iPad is connected to Wi-Fi for people to get their pictures delivered to them. Let me quickly show you all what it looks like when people get their photos delivered to their phone. It comes up as a link and people can click on it and browse the photo they just took, as well as they can access the whole photo portfolio from your event. One of the things that I enjoy about this app too is that every picture that is taken through Luma Booth is automatically saved onto the iPad's camera roll as well. One of the caveats to using this app is a subscription fee. For someone who hosts a lot of events, it may be useful to purchase an annual subscription, but for me, when I use this for my wedding, I just paid the $20 monthly fee and then unsubscribed after my event was complete. At the end of the day, this app gives you a ton of customizable features that a traditional photo booth rental would not. At this point, you have a great understanding of how to make this DIY photo booth, but let's tally up the cost of the items to see what this photo booth actually costs. I'm gonna display on the screen over to my right here all the different materials that were purchased. However, as you can imagine, some of the prices are going to vary depending on what you might already have at home. So just to recap what materials we needed, we purchased PVC pipe and all the PVC pipe um, attachments. Then of course the fabric for the photo booth backdrop. We purchased or made photo booth props. We needed this lovely tripod ring light setup with the iPad mounting accessories. Then of course, you need the iPad. And that creates really everything that you need to make the photo booth. I'd say the pricing of all this is really reasonable considering what you would have to pay to hire a photo booth for any sort of event. And then of course you have to staff a photo booth to make sure that it's able to be run. 
I think probably the one of the biggest benefits of doing this DIY photo booth setup is that it's self-service. So your guests can come up to the photo booth whenever they want. There's no set hours for it. And really, they can take as many pictures as they'd like. As I mentioned earlier, all of the items mentioned in this video are gonna be linked in the description box below. If you like this video, feel free to let me know by giving it a like or by subscribing and seeing what I come up with for future videos. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.